Hello, my name is Kevin Anikowski, and this episode is on forgetting. First, let's start with retrieval failure theory, sometimes called the tip of the tongue phenomenon or cue dependent forgetting. But retrieval failure theory is the one that you hear most of the time. It can be explained by this scenario. Imagine yourself going into the kitchen to grab something, but when you arrive, you can't remember what it was. The external cues necessary to retrieve the memory from long-term storage are absent. This is the argument of retrieval failure theory. Certain cues need to be present for retrieval. Retrieval failure theory is different from decay theory, which states memories leave physical traces throughout the brain, but these fade given ample time. Decay is mainly occurring in the short-term memory because the long-term memory, as you know, is more stable. Decay theory parallels with displacement theory of forgetting, which relates back to the multi-store model of memory. The displacement theory states that as soon as short-term memory capacity is reached, memories begin to be displaced or forgotten. Displacement may also explain the recency effect mentioned earlier. Can you figure out how? Well, the primacy effect argues things learned first can go to long-term memory, but recent things go to short-term memory, which we know has a limited capacity. Thus, things would have to be displaced because of the limited capacity. Now for amnesia types. Amnesia is predominantly split into two main types. We have enterograde and retrograde amnesia. Enterograde amnesia is when you can't remember new memories. Think antero, which may be from proactive interference from old memories, aka when old memories are proactively hindering the new information or recalling the new information. Retrograde amnesia, on the other hand, is the ability to recall old memories. Retrograde amnesia could be due to what kind of interference? Retroactive interference, when recent information interferes with recalling older information. Amnesia could be occurring for multiple reasons. For instance, maybe head trauma like when your parents dropped you as a child or when you couldn't remember last night because of that reefer you were smoking. Both of these are examples of organic amnesia due to biological organic reasons, although I doubt that reefer was organic. The other cause is psychogenic amnesia, the same as functional or dissociative amnesia caused by psychological mental disorders. The main term that you often find, though, is dissociative amnesia. Dissociative amnesia may occur from a memory that is too painful to recall and is thus repressed, or it may result from symptoms of dissociative identity disorder, which we're not going to discuss here. A facet of dissociative amnesia represented in dissociative identity disorder is a temporary state known as dissociative fugue. It's its own disorder in the DSM-5, involving forgetting past memories during your dissociative state. Not to be confused with the states of intoxication when you don't remember where you live. So you basically have a bunch of words using dissociative, and they all involve psychogenic forgetting. So when you see dissociative, think of psychogenic forgetting. Dissociative amnesia closely parallels with Freudian defense mechanism repression, which underscores the fact that we're all messed up. So let's dig deeper and find out why. Maybe you have a screen memory interfering with your real memory of your childhood. In this case, psychologists might want to dig deeper, but incidentally could use leading questions to pull out a memory that hasn't actually happened and people end up suing psychologists as a result on occasion. Additionally, we all have infantile or childhood amnesia. It's the result of not remembering memories at a younger age. Despite little differences between remembering something from age 12 versus age 18 or age 25, most people can't remember anything before the age of four. It's theorized that the difference is due to a lack of language or mental tools to encode earlier memories, and then you have to be able to decode them later in life. And that's it for this episode.